I'm sorry, let's go with Numbers 33, verse 1. Chapter 33, Numbers chapter 33. <clears throat> then we'll go to Judges 14. And this is just going through a bi- biographical uh, quick summary of Samson. And then uh, we're going <clears> to <throat> look at some things that uh, our, this generation of young people growing up is going to be very difficult. I'm, I'm personally, I'm glad I'm old. Don't have to deal with this age. And so, uh, Judges 14. So, Numbers uh, 33, verse 50. Uh, the Lord spake unto Moses in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When ye are passed over Jordan into the land of Canaan. So, they're going to go into this uh, new country, Canaan, the Canaanites, they're Hamites. Okay, and they're very sensual, very perverse. Fornication was rampant. It was, they were overtaken with it. Uh, 52, then, then ye shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you and destroy all their pictures. Notice that, pictures. Destroy all their molten images and quite pluck down all their high places. Okay, let's go ahead and pray. Lord, I do ask you to help us to understand this and help us of the older generation that we might uh, <clears throat> be praying and trying to guide the younger generation because they, they're dealing with things that uh, I never even dreamed of. And I do pray that you'd help us to uh, work um, and desire the goals of trying to please you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Numbers thirty three fifty two. you see the word pictures. So when... Uh, they came into Jericho, and then when they started going to all the different uh, nations or cities to conquer, uh, they had pictures all over the place, pornographic stuff all over the place, and, and witchcraft things. And, and God said, destroy the pictures. Now, I find it interesting. The new Bibles take the word pictures out and put something else in. I don't know what they put in. But they take the word pictures out. And that shows us the power of pictures. Now, if you have pictures that move, and then you put music to the pictures that move, which is movies, then you're amazingly putting some great, or not great, but uh, influence into something. Okay, so the purpose this morning is, is very simple. If you would go to Judges, I want to read down, and if you please have a Bible. Young people got a Bible and follow along. With uh, reading, if you if you'd like pictures in your Bible, ask my wife, so she can get you a Bible with got pictures in it. You can get them from uh, No Greater Joy, okay? Or you can draw some pictures on the side, okay? But uh, follow through the biography of Samson. Now, what the Bible does, it takes a, a twenty years and then crushes it down to one chapter, or seventy years, and then brings it down into a few verses. And so then you got to think about it, meditate on it. But yet you'll find little things where where Samson went wrong. <clears throat> now, the younger generation coming up now, teenagers, and there are some Christian young couples are even debating about bringing a child into the world because of the pressure. I understand that. I do understand that. Um, but I, I don't think it should deter you from that. But still, the pressure that young people are going through today is thousand times worse than when I was in school. Now, uh, I don't know. I think I had an advantage because uh, I was an introvert, a loner. I liked my own company. I liked the company of my dog. I, I'd get some hogs on occasion. I'd like their company. I didn't go to parties in high school. I didn't go to somebody's house to stay overnight. Uh, and I didn't feel the need to do that. And personally, that saved me, I do say, from a lot of things that happened. Uh, my, but the guys I'd goof off with in school, they'd tell me about their camping time. I wouldn't go, not that I was snobbish or I wasn't invited. Uh, it just didn't happen, I don't know. I, I remember one time, uh, I got home late from doing something, and my dad's solution was to get me up earlier the next morning. I was in bed probably by 9 o'clock that next night. 
Uh, nothing good really happens after midnight. Okay, if you have kids staying over, I mean, I mean, look at these boys. They need their beauty sleep. Okay, and uh, if you study health, healing hormones, I mean, you get to bed at 10, you've got two hours of healing to midnight, and actually it's four hours of healing hormones of sleeping rather than waiting till after midnight. So uh, those are just thoughts, suggestions I'm throwing out there. But uh, the elder folks or grandparents, uh, we need to be praying every day for these young people. Every day. The pressures that they're under, we have not a clue. We have not a clue. Okay, and the parents, you need to, you know, really get involved with your kids. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to, we want to prevent some wounds that will eventually be scars. But if you get wounded and you get yourself in a situation and you are wounded by the world and a scar is going to develop, we're going to be there to bind up the wounds. Okay, that's what we're going to do. Now, that doesn't mean you should go out and purposely cut yourself by the world, but still. Okay, and so... I'm going to go through uh, Judges 14, just comes through there. And there's a phrase that I hear people say, well, so-and-so, did you hear about so-and-so? They ruined their life. Personally, I like that phrase. I would say they scarred their life, but if you have breath, there's hope. Okay, you got breath, there's hope. And you can make something still good. If you've been dealt some lemons, you can make some lemonade out of it. Okay, Judges 14. So all we're, I'm just going to read down through. It's not hard to do. I mean, anybody you know, could do what I'm going to do. I'm going to point out a couple of things. Samson went down to Timnath and saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of Philistine. So he's looking at some girls outside of his race, outside of his faith. In the preceding chapter, you see that Samson was given a, a pretty strict system growing up. But remember the judges dealt with a time where secular humanism was rampant, and that's what it is in our culture. They did that which was right in their own eyes. And so you're going to see some bizarre things here in Judges. Okay, he came up and told his father and his mother and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of Philistines. Now, therefore, get her for me to, to wife. Kind of bossy. Kid talked to me that way. I'd say, excuse me? Uh, I mean, he, not, I don't see much respect with this uh, fella, Samson. Then said his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of the brethren or among all my people that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? See, mom and dad <laughs> appealing to him. I don't know. You can read between the lines here. He, he's probably been pushing it. And, his, and Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, for she pleases me well. And there comes a time where a child can push a parent to the point where a parent gives in. I know a lady down in, uh, knew of a situation in Indianapolis. We had a young man that got, got injured bad, okay? Doing something silly. Right in the back of a pickup, running 80 mile an hour, he stood up and threw him out of the back of the pickup, landed on his head, took his skin from here and pulled it all the way back. Took him to Jasper County and they let him sit for 23 hours. They didn't know what to do with him. And then they shipped him down to Indianapolis. That's a tough situation. <clears throat> okay, and, but in the same hospital, there's a, a mother and a daughter, daughter's 18, and she kept begging mom, let me go, let me go, let me go. She didn't want to let her go. She did finally... Gave in to her, and the girl had an accident and was paralyzed to the rest of her life. And don't you know, I, I'm not saying if you, you, this is going to happen in every case. I'm not saying that. But don't you know, Mama, to the day she died, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish. Okay, so it, it, it appears to me here that Samson is pushing to get his way. Four, but his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord. Now, that doesn't mean that it's right, because this is a time where they did that was right in their own eyes. It's just that the Lord is allowing this to take place because he wants to do something. They sought on occasion against the Philistines, for at that time the Philistines had dominion over the Israelite, Israel. Then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Timnath and came to the vineyards of Timnath 
And behold, a young lion roared against him, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. Notice that he can be doing something right and wrong and be the same individual. Extremely good, extremely bad. And, and he rent him as he would have rent a kid, and he had nothing in his hand. <clears throat> okay, now this is what he's doing. is Now he's touched a dead body that was outside of a Nazarite vow. So he's done something that may not be sinful, but it was a, against a promise that was, to be, was made. And it's, then it says this, but he told not his father or his mother what he had done. He kept something secret from his parents. There's go something going on there. Why? Why do young people do something, they keep something secret from their parents, so they're hiding or scurrying around? Why? They know why. They know they wouldn't be pleased. They know it would hurt them. They know it would hurt God. But we've all been there, young people. We've all been there. You know, a long time ago for me, but we've all been there. He went down and talked with a woman, and she pleased Samson well. And after that time, he returned to take her, and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. <coughs> and behold, there was a swarm of bees. Okay, so he's touching a dead body that was not allowed for Nazarite. And behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. And he took thereof in his hands and went on eating, came to his father and mother and gave to them. And they did eat, but he told them not that he had taken the honey out of the carcass of the lion. Now he subtly has involved his parents, unbeknownst to them, of what's happened. Okay, it doesn't seem like it's wrong, but yeah, that's what's going on. Okay, so his father went down with, unto the woman. Samson made there a feast, so he's got a party. For so used the young men, for so used the young men to do. And it came to pass when they saw him that they brought 30 companions to be with him. So he got a party, 30-some guys. Okay, 12, 13, 14, he, he throws a riddle out there. Yeah, I don't know what they got going on, some game they got going on. And uh, the Philistines couldn't figure it out. Probably said, what's two and two? I don't know. They couldn't figure it out. Okay, and so um, they knew that his wife knew the answer, verse 16. And Samson's wife, oh, verse 15, it came to pass on the seventh day, that they, said, that they said unto Samson's wife, Entice thy husband that he may declare unto us the riddle, lest we burn thee and thy father's house with fire. Have ye called us to take, uh, have ye called us to take that we have, is it not so? And Samson's wife wept before him and said, <laughs> Dost not, but hate me, you don't love me anymore. Lovest me not. She manipulated him. Guilt trip. You know? Put forth a riddle unto the children of thy people and has not told me. Why? Because you'd blab, woman. And he said unto her, Behold, I have not told it to my father and my mother, and shall I tell it to thee? Okay, well, we see what's going on. It's quite obvious. Okay, and you read down, and uh, you see that they, the guys were given the answer to the riddle, so now he's got to give them 30 pieces of change of, of, of clothing. So he goes out and up, kills 30 people, and gets, takes their clothes. And then gives these guys. <clears throat> Verse 19, And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he went down to Ashkelon, and th slew 30 men of them, and took their spoil, and gave change of garments unto them, which expounded the riddle. And his anger was kindled, and he went to his father's house. But Samson's wife was given to his companion... That's weird. Whom he had used as a friend. See how that's written? You ever feel used? Samson's friend wasn't his friend. He was using him. That's this age. Okay, and so that's where we're at, where we're seeing so far. Now, what's the emotions he's gone through? Now his wife has been given to somebody else in marriage by her dad. So what's going to happen? Chapter 15, but it came to pass when, while after, in the time of wheat harvest, that Samson visited his wife with a kid, goat. And he said, I will go into my wife into the chamber, but her father would not suffer him to go out in. So obviously, there's a big fight argument going on. Isn't this a happy old family? Is it not all happy family? 
People magazine had it all written up during the day. You know, have you heard about Samson? Samson did this, Samson did that. You know, uh, conspiracies. I mean, all the magazines, you know, the tabloids, they had it. You know, see what the famous strong man has done. Yeah, there's nothing new under the sun. So now he approaches his father-in-law, verse 2, and her father said, I verily thought that thou hast utterly hated her. Therefore I gave her to thy companion. Is not her younger sister fairer than she? Take her, I pray thee, instead of her. What kind of people are these? I mean, this is absolutely bizarre. Okay, okay, I gave her to this guy, you know, and I didn't think you liked her anyway, and so on. Hey, take her sister. I mean, just, people are just crazy. Our culture's getting this way, if not already is this way. It's just nuts. Oh, aren't they all happy family? So what did Samson do with this? Watch this wonderful reaction. Samson said concerning him, now shall I be more blameless than the Philistines, though I do them of displeasure. And Samson went and caught 300 foxes. No, so he's a trapper. He caught 300. How much time did that take? He caught 300 foxes and uh, then tied two of them together, put a string on the back, put some tin cans on the back, and, uh, you know, and then took a shotgun. I'm telling you what my dad used to do. Okay, and, <laughs> but, uh, and then tied a firebrand to it, and it was time of wheat harvest, and them foxes just ran through the wheat fields, and he just destroyed everything. And don't you know the newspapers, and the insurance policy, and all the mess that was going on. I mean, that's what Samson was doing. Isn't it a nice fella? But then God will bring the spirit on him. Isn't that weird how that works? Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Okay, and so now you got a bunch of uh, destroyed wheat crops. And so what happened after that? Then the Philistines said, who hath done this? They answered Samson. Verse 6. The son-in-law of the Timnite, because he had taken his wife and given her to his companion, and as Philistines came up and burnt her and her father with fire. What a, what a thing. Another funeral. I mean, this, these cultures, when people are infested with uh, fornication, they will do some of the most bizarre things. This is uh, soap operas in real life. Okay, so that's chapter 15. Chapter 16. Then went Samson to Ga Gaza. This is the famous Gaza Strip, what's called Gaza Strip. Then went Samson to Gaza... Isn't that amazing? That's 1,000 B.C., and they're still fighting about it, right? Oh, and we're, oh, our, we're going to, a president's going to fix this, you know, 3,500-year argument, they're going to fix it. Okay, Gaza Strip, and there was, there, and saw there an harlot, went in unto her. Now, if Sam, when Samson was a 14-year-old boy, goofing around, learning how to hunt, learn, learn how to fish, trapping fox, things like that, if his buddy said, someday, Samson, someday, you're going after Harlot, he would have probably said, are you kidding me? There's no way I'm going to do that. One little decision after another, after another, after another, after another led to that. It never is one big step. It's not, I'm hiding this from dad and mom. Oh, I'm going over here. It's all these little steps through time unbeknownst to him, okay, unbeknownst to him what's happening, and all of a sudden, boom, look what happens. Now a great big explosion. Verse 4, and it, came to, and it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. Now we know the famous Bible story, Samson and Delilah. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, Entice him, and see wherein his great strength lieth, and by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him, and we will give thee, every one of us, 1,100 pieces of silver. Okay, now as we're reading this, we are saying, duh, right? And is that not true when we see 
somebody, a friend of ours, a young person going and doing something stupid, and we're saying, duh, don't you see it? They don't. Okay, a series of decisions has led down this. They're blinded to it. They've gotten blinded. They blinded themselves first, and then they blinded, and they just think it's not that bad. It can't happen to me. It just won't happen to me. It just can't happen. Yes, it can happen to each of us. It's by the grace of God that I've been married for how many every years I've been married. <laughs> and she don't know either. She just goes like this. <laughs> That's by the grace of God. Okay, and uh, all these little decisions that Samson's making. Okay, you keep reading through the story, verse 6. Delilah said to Samson, tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth. Wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. I mean, she didn't hide it, did she? Right in your face. And look at him. I, if they bind me. With seven green withs that were never dried, then shall I be weak and be as other, another man. See, now he didn't come right and tell her the truth. And so, verse 8, the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven green withs, which had been not been dried, and she bound them with them. Now, there were men lying in wait, abiding with her in the chamber, and she said unto them, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he brake the withs as a thread of tow is broken, uh, when it toucheth the fire, so his strength was not known. Would that not have said to him, uh, Hello, I don't think she's a good girlfriend. She wants to destroy me. <laughs> no, and that's the mindset. It's like the mind gets, the mind gets like programmed, you know, by the devil, by the flesh, and and the things don't. The the circuit breaker's not going. Okay, next thing. Ah, uh, let's see. Delilah said unto Samson, Behold, thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherewith thou mightest be bound. He said unto her, If they bind me fast with new ropes that were never occupied, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Delilah therefore took new ropes and bound him therewith and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And there were liars in wait abiding in the chamber. <laughs> These guys, second time around, said, oh, we're not going to get the snot beat out of us second time. We were going to wait and see on this one. <laughs> and he break them with off his arms like a thread. Samson and Delilah said to them, oh, hitherto thou hast mocked me. Told me lies. Tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, if thou weavest the seven locks of my head with the web. Now notice he's getting closer and closer and closer. He's playing with a snake. He's playing with a cobra. And he doesn't realize he's playing with a cobra. He's just blind to it. Okay, and so she said unto him, How canst thou say I love thee? Oh, we've heard that one. You don't love me. How canst thou say I love thee when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times and hast not told me wherewith thy great strength lieth. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death. Why didn't he leave? I mean, you talk about a guy that is bound to go through this trap. And he told her all his heart and said unto her, There hath not come a razor upon mine head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like other men. Now, now she knows, okay, he, he, he fessed up. It's God. It's God that gave him the strength. And when Delilah saw that he told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines and said, Come up this once, for he has showed me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand, and she made him sleep upon her knees stroking her hands through his hair, playing some music in the background as she getting a knife to cut his throat. Now, she didn't have to do that. And she called for a man 
And, he caused, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head and began to afflict him. And his strength went from him. And he looked at her and says, you don't love me. And she says, oh, you should have known that. You're an idiot. She got the money. And she said, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as other times before and shake myself. And notice, he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. He didn't think that was going to happen. There's the problem. God left. Now, that's Old Testament doctrine. Okay. Uh, but still... The Lord withdraw. Now notice what happened. The Philistines took him, put out his eyes. There's his problem. Can you imagine? Uh, evidently, they were wanting to play marbles or something. I don't know. They took, poked his eyes out. Can you imagine a pain? Okay, and poked his eyes out, and it was like the Lord probably, maybe, or a thought came to his head. Yeah, that was my problem from the start. Them eyeballs. What I was lusting after. And uh, brought him down to Gaza, bound him with fetters of brass, and he did grind in a prison house. Okay, and then you read through the rest of the story, you see what happened. He dies a, die, a life of uh, vengeance. And yeah, the Lord can take something out of this and still amazingly use it for his intentions. But. Uh, when you get to heaven and sit down and talk to Samson, I can guarantee you that he's going to say, don't do what I did. That's what he's going to say. Okay, now that's Samson. Now there's two sisters I want to briefly look at. Ezekiel 23. Two girls. Ezekiel 23 is, uh, some people are going to be shocked with what they're going to read in the Bible. I don't think some of the Bible is meant for public reading. Uh, some of it I am going to not read. You can uh, use your speed reading skills and see it. But you can see that the Bible records events that take place. Just because it's recorded in the Bible doesn't mean God is promoting it or approving of it. He is recording real-life events. These are two girls, two sisters. They are being used by God to illustrate Israel and Judah, or Samaria, I guess, Samaria and Jerusalem. Okay, so uh, two girls, they, they were girls that um, would probably cruise at nighttime. They'd probably get in a car and drive back and forth. I don't know if they still do that. Uh, and cruise around and, you know, you know, yell at boys and all that stuff. Uh, they probably, uh, in their bedrooms, they probably got, um, you know, soldiers' pictures on the wall. They probably got Justin Bieber on there as a little kid, you know, little sissy boy. Uh, and probably born a girl, and the music industry usually switches them. Uh, and so uh, these girls, they were uh, infatuated with the guys. Okay, so chapter 23, and the word of the Lord came unto, again unto me, saying, Son of man, there were two women, the daughters of one mother. So now they've grown up, and they've committed whoredoms in Egypt. They committed whoredoms in their youth. You can read what they did, verse, the rest of the verse. There's their name, verse 4, Ahola and Aholiab, two sisters. Okay, the first one, the older one, verse 5, Ahola played the harlot when she was mine. She doted on her lovers. She chased them. She went after them. Okay, on the Assyrians, her neighbors, which were clothed with blue and captains and rulers, all of them desirable young men, horsemen riding upon horses. She would run to the... Uh, Dock when the Navy boats came in to meet the Navy guys. That's what she's doing. Okay, I mean, wow. Thus she committed her whoredoms with them, with all them that were chosen men of Assyria, and with all on whom she doted, with all her idols, she defiled herself. 
Neither left she her whoredoms brought from Egypt, for in her youth they lay with her. And you see what they did. Okay, I mean, it's amazing. Wherefore I have delivered her into the hand of her lovers. God got sick of it. God got tired of it. Into the hand of the Assyrians upon whom she doted. These discovered her nakedness. They took her sons and her daughters and slew her with the sword. Died. She never thought that would happen. Oh, we love each other. Never thought that would happen. Killed her. Can't imagine that would happen. She became famous among women. Wow, that's quite a way to be famous. For they had executed judgment upon her. When her sister, Aholiab, saw this, she was more corrupt in her inordinate love than she. And in her whoredoms, more than her sister in her whoredoms, she doted upon the Assyrians, her neighbors. Captains and rulers clothed most gorgeously. Horsemen riding upon horses, all of them desirable young men. Then I saw that she was defiled, and they took, and they took both one way. And that she increased her whoredoms. For when she saw men portrayed upon the wall, there's the pictures. Got them on the billboards. Got, I mean, in her bedroom, all through the bedroom. The images of the Chaldeans portrayed with vermilion, red, girded with girdles upon their loins. A soldier, exceeding and exceeding and dyed attire upon her heads. All of them princes to look at to, after the manner of the Babylonians of the Chaldeans in the land of nativity. As soon as she saw them with her eyes, she doted upon them and sent messengers unto them in Chaldea. And the Babylonians came to her into the bed of love. Now you see how the word love is used. It's like Hollywood uses it. And they defiled her with their whoredoms and she was polluted with them. And now notice, notice. And her mind was alienated from them. It wasn't what I thought. Hollywood portrayed we're going to live happily ever after. He's going to swoop me off my feet and we're going to... Oh. It's, it's hit her. Kind of late, isn't it? Now she's got these scars. Now she's got these memories. And she's, why did I do that? You see, it's all a series of little things coming through here. And look what happens. So she discovered her whoredoms and discovered her nakedness. Then my mind was alienated from her, like as my mind was alienated from her sister. God said, oh, God, I'm done. Now, if we cross somebody in that situation as a believer, we take out our, our hanky or our rag and cry with them and put them pieces back together. Even though you messed up here, you're not done. You're not done. If David would have quit after adultery and murder, how many of the Psalms would we have? If he would have said, what's the use? I, re I killed somebody. I destroyed a family. He could, he could have gave up. And God had mercy on David. And all the Psalms and the kingdoms, what? The son of Abraham, the son of... That's the God of the Bible. I tell you, that's the thing about the God of the Bible that should draw anybody over Allah. What would Allah do? He'd dump you. Okay, and, and that's the God of the Bible and the glorious mercy of God. Now, if a person, here's how you and I can look at that, okay? You can look at it and you say, I've never done that. You're capable of. You're capable of it. Don't be so self-righteous, stick your nose up in the air and say, I haven't done something like that. Yeah, but that's in your nature. According to Galatians 5. And if you haven't, praise God, but help people that have and love them the way God wants us to love them. 
That repentance steps in, that's when we step in. Now, if they're still hell-bent on going that way, we stay on our knees and pray and pray and pray and cry and pray and cry and cry and pray. But when that realization hits them, that's when we step in. Okay, verse 19, Yet she multiplied her whoredoms and calling to remembrance the days of her youth. That's what's going to draw her back. Wherein she played the harlot in the land of Egypt, she doted upon her paramours. What's that? It's the only time that's found in the Bible. Want we'll to see how more perverse it gets? Comma. Whose flesh is as a flesh of asses and whose issue is like the issue of horses. She's stepping into something, uh-huh. Weird. I mean, and then 21, thus thou callest to remembrance the lewdness of thy youth, and so forth. And so, I, I tell you, we older generation, we don't know the pressure these kids are under these days. You got a cell phone? The enemy is going to bring it up if you're innocently trying to see something and learn something. They're going to pull it up. Five-second clip. Okay? Two-second. One-second. And the devil knows that that's how he intermingles the society to get us in an entanglement web because spirits flow that way and entangle people, and then they're helpless and everything's just ruined. Okay? And the Lord, the glorious thing about God Almighty, in a psalm, the great Psalm 23, it says, The Lord restoreth my soul. There's a God in heaven. That God in heaven, and you read through this Bible, and you'll see that these people have gone through these things, and you'll see these Bible characters, and we see some of these men were holy and all that. Some of these men just as wicked as anybody else and committed some horrible things. But when they turned to that God, that God took them. And that's the God we have. Praise the glorious God we got. And so... Basically, as adults, we're doing all we can to protect, prevent. But nobody, but you can do all you can to protect and present, pre- prevent. But there are some that slip through. And when that slips through and things don't go right, then, and they, they are asking for help, that's when we step in and we're going to do all we can. That's what the Bible wants us to do. Okay, and so... You got Samson, you got his two sisters. And let's go and pray. Lord, I do pray and ask and help us to see the evilness of this age. Oh, this age, how wicked it is. This world hates every, this world and the devil and his company hates every young person in this room. It hates every one of us. And the devil has come to steal, to kill, and destroy. And as the buzzards fly over us, he's just enjoying that. And help us, help us to do what we can to uh, guard, protect, because of our great love for young people. And Lord, if by chance something goes through the cracks and something happens, I pray that you'd help us to cry, pray, and forgive, and restore. Because the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sin. Oh, what a blessing that is. Lord, I just pray you'd help us in that matter. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Sam, we need you to sing a song for baptism. We have another baptism. So.